WMAQ AM and FM Chicago, a service of RCA. 8 p.m. for pleasure and relaxation, it's Pepsi Cola. <laughs> Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Edmund O'Brien and Walter Brennan in The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you another of our 20 greats, the exciting never-ending drama of man's greed for gold. It's that fine Warner Brothers picture, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. And as our stars, one of this year's nominees for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, Edmund O'Brien, one of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, starring Edmund O'Brien as Dobbs and Walter Brennan as Howard. The first time I come up with them was in Tampico. That's a seaport, Tampico, northeast Mexico. I was having me a beer near the docks when they come in. It was a hot Sunday afternoon. You a fellow American? <laughs> That's right, mister. What do you want? I want to know about a guy named McCormick. Ever hear of him? McCormick, McCormick, well, is he in the oil business? Yeah, you seen him lately? Well, if I was you, gentlemen, I'd run clear of McCormick. Hires a crew to work in the oil fields, and then never pays off. He's slick, like oil. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You don't mean to tell me he's hooked two smart fellow Americans like you. That's right, Pop. Six weeks in the oil fields, 120 in the shade. Only I ain't through with Mr. McCormick. Fred C. Dobbs is going to get his wages, see? Come on, Dobbs. Let's have a beer. I see him again that night. Uh, they come wandering in the flop house. Fifty cent tavos for a bed. Me, I'm sitting up talking to a couple of sailors. The subject of conversation is gold. You mean there's gold here in Mexico? Not ten days away from this very spot. Whole mountain of gold. Waiting for the right guy to come along. Discover a treasure and then tickle it till she lets him have it. Now you tell me something, mister. Why is gold worth some 20 bucks an ounce? Well, I don't know, Pop. Because it's scarce, I guess. Look, a thousand men say, uh, go searching for gold. After six months, one of them's lucky. One out of a thousand. His find represents not only his labor, but that of 999 others to boot. An ounce of gold, mister, is worth what it is because of the human labor and suffering that went into the getting of it. Hmm. I never thought of it just like that. Yeah, when you start out, you tell yourself you'll be satisfied with uh, 25,000 smackers of it. And after months of sweating yourself dizzy and growing short on provisions and finding nothing, you finally come down to 15,000, then 10. <laughs> when you say, Lord... Let me just have $5,000 worth, and I'll never ask for anything more the rest of my life. $5,000 is still a lot of dough. Yeah, but if you make a real strike, you couldn't be dragged away from it. Not even the threat of a miserable death would keep you from trying to add 10000 more. Get 10, you want 25. 25, you want to get 50. 50, 100. Wouldn't be that way with me. Oh, hello, mister. You didn't find my comic, huh? No, I'll find him. But about gold, I swear it wouldn't be that way with me. I take only what I set out to get. I've dug gold all over the world. I know what gold does to a man. You talk as if you once struck it rich. How about it, Pop? Yeah, what are you doing in here, Pop, a down and out of? <laughs> That's gold, mister. Never knew a prospector yet that died rich. Sure, I'm a gnawed old bone now, but don't you guys think the spirit's gone? I'm all set to shoulder a pick and a shovel any time anybody's willing to share expenses. Oh, I bet you are. Of course, uh, going alone is the best way. But you got to have a stomach for loneliness. And then, on the other hand, going with a partner or two is dangerous. Murder's all that's lurking about. Partners accusing each other of all sorts of madness. Well, why should finding gold make a man any different? If he's the right kind of man to start with. Gold ain't going to change him. You ever tried running down, mister? Ever tried prospecting? No. No, I ain't. <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't have to answer that question. I knew the answer. Uh, you know it all, Pop. I think I'll go to bed. Dream about piles of gold growing bigger and bigger and bigger. A week later, I see him again. Dobbs and Curtin, all lumps and bloodied up. Looking for me, they was. Something to tell me. They take me to a canteen and put a bottle of beer under my nose. We found a comic, Pop. <laughs> From the looks of you, you found a peck of trouble, too. Yeah, but we got our wages. Every last penny of it. And we've been thinking. Why not try digging gold for a change? Well, it ain't any riskier than waiting around here for a break. And this is a country where the nuggets of gold are just crying for you to take them out of the ground. <laughs> Well, that's what you said the other night, wasn't it? Yeah, what's so funny? Living out in the open is cheaper than living in town. Our, our money would last longer. Sure it would, sure. Well, you have to have equipment. You know how much that would cost? Well, we, uh, we figured we'd ask you. We ain't denying anything when you come right down to it. We don't know too much about prospecting. If you wasn't so old... Yeah, maybe I'd go with you. Is that what's on your mind? Maybe you'd take me along, huh? Yeah, well, uh, would you? Would you go? ha, <laughs> ha. Of course I'll go, any time, any day. Out for gold, always at your service. Well, I got 200 American bucks ready cash. How much dough you guys got to put in? 150 bucks. Curtain here has got the same. Total of 500, huh? That ain't hardly enough to buy tools, weapons, and essentials. Well, what do we need guns for? Well, for one thing, meat. For another thing, bandits. Bandit country's where we be going. We ought to have 600 bucks between us anyways. That much, huh? You can't dig up any more, huh? Uh, not a red cent. Senor! Senor Doc! Give me my money, Senor! Give me my money! Get away from me, will you? Senor, you don't comprehend. You'll comprehend a glass full of beer right in your kiss if you don't leave me alone. I tell you, I don't want any lottery tickets. Now beat it, come on. <laughs> lottery tickets? Why, that's for gambling men. But always whoever wins a lucky number... Give the seller a present of 10%. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Hey, Dobbs, he's trying to tell you he, he sold you a winning ticket. Here, look. The list of all the winning numbers. You buy a ticket for five centavos, remember? For three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember. What about You it? win, senor. You win. Give me that paper. Ho, oh, ho, brother. <laughs> Just look at that fat, rich, printed number. You huh? got the ticket? Sure, I got the ticket. Welcome, sweet little smackaroos. Here you are, son. Here. <laughs> Here's a present for you with my blessing. Go to the lobby office, senor. Get the money. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> yourself. You stand a profit out of this, same as I do. Well, now, uh, how do you figure that? Well, didn't he just say we needed 600 bucks? Well, look, that's that's what we got now, ain't it? <laughs> yes, sir, just like that. Stroke of faith. Yeah, but how, how come you're putting up for me? Because this is an all-or-nothing proposition. If we make a fine, we'll be lighting cigars with hundred-dollar bills. If we don't, the difference between what you put up and what I put up ain't enough to keep me from being right back where I was this afternoon. <laughs> put her there, pard. <laughs> Thanks, Dob. Well, gentlemen, here's what we'll do. we we'll take a train to Perla. That's a little town for the Sierra Madre Mountains. That's where we'll buy our burrs and get away from the railroad. Now, there's no use looking for gold anywhere near a railroad. we got to go away where there's no trails at all. Just bandits. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds okay to me. Okay, partner? Sure, sure. we got to go where no surveyor, anybody who knows anything about prospecting, has ever been before. Well, drink up, gentlemen. Then we'll buy us a map and some railroad tickets. <laughs> What about half our gear there in San Francisco? Then we took the train for Pura. About 50 miles from Pura, out in the desert, there was a big boulder on the tracks. Bandits trying to raid the train. Look, they're retreating. They're riding off. Save your bullets, Mr. Dodge. You're too far off now. I got three of them. Credit me with three. How many did you get? Uh, a couple there, I guess. Bandits, yeah. I guess they were expected. That's how come so many federal soldiers riding this train. That bandit rode right up to the train. The, the, the one the, with the gold hat there? Yeah, I had my sights on him, nice as you please. But the train gave a jolt and I missed him. Yeah, well, you boys cooled off enough to look at this map? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it ain't much of a map. It don't properly show whether it's mountain or desert. That shows the makers of the map didn't know themselves. And, well, that's good. 
What are you doing, Dobbs? Reloading. Can't tell if them bandits may come back. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Wake me up when the shooting starts. Una A con media luna arriba. Este es lo mismo. Una A con media luna arriba. Hey, Pop, what's he saying, Mr. Talkie? Uh, but... He's proving he's got a right to sell us them birds. They all got the same brand. Seal it, Ray. I will load your supplies on the burro, senor. Hey, thanks, son, thanks. My father is much worried for you, senor. Worried? What's he worried for? <laughs> yeah, we paid him, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, he says we're going into very wild country, jungles and then high mountains. Tigers so big and strong they can climb a tree with a burrow in the mouth. Tigers? Here? Ah, uh, they're more like leopards, I guess. Well, I'm glad to hear such tall tales, gentlemen. That means mighty few outsiders ever set foot up there. Well, let's get going then. Come on, kids, shake it up. Get them burrows loaded. Hey, Curtin, take it easy, will you? Oh, there's a mountain climbing. It ain't like a walk around the block. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead. Come on, let's get a while. There is gold in these mountains. How long would it have been there? Millions and millions of years, wouldn't it? Yeah. What's our hurry? A couple of days more or less ain't going to matter. <laughs> Look at that old man. Way ahead of us up there. You and me scared, we'd, we'd have to pack him on our back. Yeah. That was when I took him for an ordinary human being. He's part goat. You know, if I'd have known what prospecting meant, I'd have stayed in Tampico, waited for another job to turn up. Curtain. Curtain, look, look. What's the matter? These rocks, look. Those little veins running through the rocks. Look at them glitter yellow, too, like, like gold. Gold? <laughs> We've been sitting on a gold mine. Get the water bag. Watch some of that dirt off. Howard, Howard, come back, come back. We found something. Ah. We found something. Here, here's the water. There's a vein all over the rock. We struck it, Curtin. Look, look over there. It's in all the rocks, just like he said. It's a bonanza. Howard, look, look at the rocks. They're full of gold, veins of gold. Is that what you want to show me? Gentlemen, this stuff wouldn't pay you dinner for Carlo. Huh? It ain't gold. It's pyrite, fool's gold. Oh, of course. Yeah, there's not that there's not plenty of the real stuff hereabouts. We've walked over it four or five times already. You, you mean we've been passing it up? Why? There ain't enough of it. Not enough gold to pay us a good day's wages. Well, you figure to sit here all day? Come on, Kurt, let's go. Next time you fellas strike it rich, holler for me first before you start splashing the water around. Water is precious. Sometimes it can be more precious than gold. <laughs> Fine country, inspiring. Didn't see a soul, just the beasts of the jungle and birds. I felt good. Ten years younger. Better than neither of them. Wore them down to just plain gristle. Come night, they'd just lay on the ground, puffing and groaning. Too dogged out to set up and eat the beans. I can't move. Oh, I just want to lie here. Oh, yeah. Mm. Ain't you going to have some beans? Going through some mighty rough country tomorrow. You better have some beans. Shut up, Pop. Go on, eat them. Just let us alone. Mm. That wind, it's blowing up awful cold. Yeah. Getting cold, is it? Getting cold, yeah. Feels like a norther. Yeah, when they blow hard, they set the desert country below us right on its hind legs. You know, we're lucky to be where we are. <laughs> Lucky, huh? Reckon there's only a couple of more days of this heavy stuff. Pretty soon we'll be leveling off. Yeah. Pretty soon now. Howard. Howard, come here. A couple of more days, you said. That was three nights ago. Yeah, we've really had enough, Howard. Dobbs and me, we just want to give up. Give up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Leave the whole outfit right here. <laughs> go back to civilization. What's that you say? Go back? Go back? 
will kill my old grandmother. I got two very elegant bedfellows that kick at the first gust of wind and hide in the closet when the thunder rumbles. My, 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 what great prospect. Now lay off us, Howard. Two shoe clerks is what you are. Two shoe clerks read in a magazine about prospecting for gold in the land of the midnight sun. <laughs> Shut your trap. Shut up, Rob. Smash your head flat. Go ahead. Pick up that rock and throw it. If you did, you'd never leave this wilderness alive without me. Well, you two would die here miserable and in rats. Leave him alone, Dobbs. Can't you see the old man's nuts? Nuts? Nuts, am I? Let me tell you something, my two fine bedfellas. You're so dumb, there's nothing to compare you with. You're dumber than the dumbest jackass. You're so dumb, you don't even see the riches you're treading on with your own feet. Look at me! I'm dancing on it! Doing a gig on a man of gold! What are you talking about? You mean, you mean this is it? There's gold here? <laughs> What you expect to see, nuggets of molten gold? Sure it's here. But it comes from someplace further up. Up there, see? That's where we gotta go, up there. Only I'm going alone because my two courageous companions have agreed between themselves to desert, to desert and go back. Well, you are get. I'll take one more day of it. What do you say, Kurt? Uh, well, one more day won't kill us. <laughs> Changed your minds, huh? Well, thank you, my two fine-feathered friends. You move me to tears with your face and trust in me. One more day, huh? Well, then you can follow my trail because I'm going to be camping up there tonight. This is it, Howard? Yeah, this is it, all right. This stuff right here? That's right. Gold. It sure don't look like I thought it would. Well, that's just sand. That's just sand. Yeah, it's just like plain sand that don't glitter. I thought it would glitter. Oh, it'll glitter when it's refined, but that's another guy's job. <laughs> you got to know how to recognize it. You got to know how to tickle her so she'll come out, too. Yeah, it's mighty rich, this sand. This will pay good. How good? Oh, about 20 ounces to the ton. That's some $20 an ounce. How many tons can we handle in a week? It depends on how hard we work. Well, we better pitch camp down the mountain there a bit. Well, why do that when the gold is here? Well, in case anybody happens by. Bandits, uh, soldiers chasing bandits, or engines. In case that happens, we just tell them we're hunters, see? Hunters? Well, wouldn't it just be easier to file a claim? Yeah, easy maybe, but not so profitable. Wouldn't be no time till necessary from one of them big mining companies to be right up here with a paper in his hand showing we had no right to be here. Well, how does it feel to be men of property? I'm um, sorry about the fuss we kicked up, Pop. I, I guess we were pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we made it, huh? We're here. Men of property. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Everything's going to be all right from now on, huh? Sure it is. Why not? <laughs> Why not, huh? Why not? We'll find out, won't we, Dobbsy? <laughs> yes, sir, we'll find out. In a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Now for our Hollywood reporter, Francis Scully. Well, with all the talk going around about George Powell's new Technicolor production, Conquest of Space, I stopped over at Paramount to see it. I hear a lot of the action in it takes place on a space station way above the <laughs> Earth. 1,100 miles above the Earth, can. The men stationed there have been commissioned to build a spaceship for a flight to the moon. Then their orders are changed, and they end up on Mars. Well, who's in the cast, Francis? Uh, mostly newcomers, aren't they? <laughs> Some mighty promising newcomers, Ken. Walter Brooks, Eric Fleming, Phil Foster, Georgiana Johnson, and Joan Shawley. Well, George Powell's pictures are always great, and I'm sure Conquest of Space is no exception. <laughs> well, I'm sure everyone will be thrilled by the spectacular outer space scenes. I certainly was. Say, uh, Francis, I, I hope we have a Lux girl among those promising newcomers you spoke of. <laughs> that we do, Ken. Joan Shawley has a Lux complexion that would do the biggest star proud. She's a picture in Technicolor. Ah, uh, that's what I like to hear. 
and it's something for you and our audience to think about. Why does an ambitious young actress like Joan Shawley put her faith in Lux Toilet Soap? The answer is she's found out from other girls, just as particular about complexion care as she is, that there's no other beauty soap quite like Lux. Remember, nine out of ten Hollywood stars use Lux. And that's reason enough for any woman to do the same. So make the star's favorite soap your soap, too. You can, because you don't have to be a movie star to have a movie star complexion. That's the beauty of Lux. It can give you and you and you fresher, lovelier skin. And Lieber Brothers unconditionally guarantees it. Now, our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act Two of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, starring Edmund O'Brien as Dobbs and Walter Brennan as Howard. For a month, I guess we didn't mine a grain of ore. There were things to do first, such as setting up camp, corrals for the burrows and the sluiceways off in the creek to wash out the gold. Finally, the time come when we weighed up our first take of the treasure. How much, Howard? How much figure we got there? Oh, I'd say about $5,000 worth, I reckon. Yeah, not bad. When do we start dividing it up? Well, why divide it now? When the time comes, we're all going back together, aren't we? I'm for dividing as we go along. Make make each guy responsible for his own goods. Well, I'd just soon have it that way myself. Uh, I haven't liked the responsibility of guarding your treasure any too well. Who asked you to, pal? <laughs> That's right. You never did ask me. Only I thought I was the most trustworthy of the three. <laughs> you? I said the most trustworthy. <laughs> as far as being the most honest, well, no one can say. I don't get it. All right. Suppose you was charged with taking care of the goods. One day I'm deep in the brush and let's say Curtin here is on his way to the village to get provisions. That'd be your big chance to pack up and leave us in the cold, wouldn't it? Now, only a guy that's a thief at heart would think me likely to pull a stunt like that. Well, right now, it wouldn't be worth your while, of course, but when the pile's grown, well, think of such things you will. Yeah. <laughs> How about yourself? Me? <laughs> I'm not quick on my feet any longer. You fellas are a lot tougher than when you started out, too. Well, you'd have me strung up in no time. That's why I think I'm the most trustworthy. Well, looking at it that way, I guess you're right, but... No, let's do like Dobbs says, divide the proceeds every night. Well, that's well by me, gentlemen, and then each of us will hide his share of the treasure from the other two, huh? Well, why not? And having done so, he'll have to be forever on the watch that his hiding place is not discovered. What a dirty, filthy no, mind no, you've got. No, no, not dirty, not dirty, baby. Only I know what kind of ideas even supposedly decent people get when gold's at stake. All right, Curtin, hand me them weighing scales. And here she goes, boys. Three ways. Mm, venison stew. That sure tastes good, Pop. Where's Dobbs? Oh, he ate before. No. Alone? Yeah. Hey, can you tell me something, Pop? What, what are you going to do with all your hard-earned money? Uh, I reckon I'll settle down some quiet place, get me a little business, a hardware, grocery store, spend a better part of my time reading comic strips and adventure stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing for sure, I'm not going to go prospecting no more. What's all that about? Well, just John, Dobbsy, telling each other what we'll do when we get back. Me, I got it all figured. First of all, I'm going to get a brand new set of duds. Dozen of everything. Then I'm going to a swell cafe and order everything on the bill of fare. And if it ain't just right, and even if it is, I'm going to ball out the manager and make him take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> What's next on the program? <laughs> well, what would be? <laughs> you know what? We ought to put some kind of a limit on a take here. What kind of limit? Oh, say, $25,000 for each man. 25000 Small potatoes. 50 anyway. 75 would be more like it. I'm young. I need dough and plenty of it. Well, no use making hogs of ourselves. Hog, am I? Maybe you don't know it, but I'd be within my rights if I demanded half again as much as you get. How come? I put up the lion's share of the cash, didn't I? Oh, uh, so you did, Dobbsy, but 
Well, I always meant to pay you back. In any civilized place, the biggest investor gets the biggest return, don't he? <laughs> yeah, there's one thing in favor of the wild. No, well, it's not that I intend to demand it, but I'd, I'd be within my rights if I did. The next time you go calling me a hog, just remember what I could have done if I wanted to. <laughs> funny, ain't it, Pop? Yeah, real funny. <laughs> try to put anything over on me, it'll be a costly one for both of them. You know what's good for you? You don't monkey around with Fred C. Dobbs. What you say, Dobbs? Huh? Uh, no, nothing. Good look out. Bad sign when the fella starts talking to himself. Yeah? Well, who else am I going to talk to? Certainly not to you or Curtin. I don't get the idea you two are putting over anything on me. I, I know what your game is. Well, you know more than I do. Why am I elected to go to the village tomorrow? Why me instead of you, a curtain? Time I'd be gone, give you plenty of chance to discover where I hid my goods, wouldn't it? Well, now, you got any fear along them lines? Why don't you take your goods with you? And run the risk of having them taken from me by bandits? <laughs> and they kid anyway, Dobby, just for the sport of it. Oh, so that's it. You're hoping bandits will get me. That'd save you two a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, Dobbs. Forget about it. I ain't going to the village, see? And you can go back and tell that to Curtin. Okay, partner. I'll tell him. So Curtin went down to the village for provisions. He was all stirred up coming back. There were soldiers in the village chasing bandits. And that wasn't all either. He met up with an American. Selling in. And he kept pumping me, followed me right into that store, wanted to know what I was doing here. What'd you tell him? Well, I, I said that I was a hunter. I said I was a professional hunter. He kept asking me, did I see anything up here that looked like gold? Yeah, you shook him off, Curtin. You got rid of him, huh? I couldn't. No, he followed me. Are you sure he traded? Yes, I'm sure. What makes you so positive? Well, because every time... I... Because if you turn around, you can see for yourself. There he is. Hello. All right, you... Walk over here to the fire. I, uh, I guess I'm not wanted, huh? Well, I just couldn't resist the chance to sit around and jaw with an American. Don't make any mistake, mister. We got no use for you. We're full up. No vacancies. Go back where you came from. Take our blessing with you. Thanks. If you're hungry, mister, go on and help yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Tonight you're our guest, see... Tomorrow morning, look out. No trespassing, but where are the dogs? Get it? I, uh, I got a few hides while you were gone, Curtin. Five foxes and a tiger. Hmm? Oh, how are the skins? Oh, pretty good. Excuse me for butting in, but there's no wild game around here worth going after. Yeah, you're right, mister. That's why we've made up our minds to clear out. Yeah, that might be pretty good ground for something else. I told you, in the village, there's no gold around here. Yeah, look, my boy, if there'd been one single ounce of it, I'd have smelled it, believe me. Oh? Uh-huh. You're not as smart as you appear to be. Gold, huh? You know, that gives me an ID. Guess I'll sleep on it, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, me too. I'll see, I'll see you in the morning, Cody. Sorry there's no room in our tent. If you want to, you can roll up here by the fire. Ah, that's fine. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I can't figure him out. Is he wise to us or not? Now look, you two guys go to sleep. I'll be watchdog for a couple of hours. Then you and Dobbs can take your turns. You got a gun handy? Right here. Okay. last night, <laughs> did you, friends? <laughs> That's a fact, we didn't. Now, look, uh, why don't we lay our cards on the table right now, huh? Now, you found gold here, I know that, and because I know it, you're going to have to do one of three things. Look who's telling us what we got to do. One of three things. Kill me, run me off, or uh, take me in as a partner. Partner? 
Why, we... Now, let's consider the first. If you start killing people, just how far are you prepared to go with it, huh? Another guy may come along tomorrow, you know. Well, ain't much we stop at, mister, to protect your interests. Well, I only say that killing me isn't the answer. Now, it's for choice number two. You run me off. And, uh, I might very well inform on you. 25% of your gold is the reward I get. Well, that's a pretty strong argument in favor of killing you. I don't deny that. But you take me in as a partner, and you don't lose anything. I'm not asking for a share of what you've made so far, only in the profits to come. Uh, why don't you think it over, huh? I'll be looking after my burrow. Well, Howard? You're sending him away is out of the question. Fred C. Dobbs ain't a guy likes being taken advantage of. We got no real choice at all. Bump him off. Yeah, but what do we gain by killing him? I don't mind being taken some advantage of as long as it ain't money out of my pocket. And whoever else happens along, there to be invited in too. Come one, come all. Huh? Yeah, you get a point there, Dobbs. No question about it. But to kill a man, why it's... What's the matter? Ain't you up to it? Sure, I'm up to it. Let the majority decide. What do you say, Curtin? For or again? Well, for or against? For. Okay. We'll make it short and sweet for him. Stand right where you are, Cody. Guns, huh? You're gonna shoot me, huh? Yeah. You convinced us. Before you start shooting, you better take a look down there in the valley. There's some men coming on horses. So that's your stinking game. I knew you was an informer. I knew it all the time. You're wrong, brother. This means all our funerals. They're bandits, gentlemen. About a dozen of them. Somebody at the village must have told them about the American hunter up here. Well, we better start thinking about a way to defend ourselves. We could try hiding in the rocks, but then we'd lose our burrs and the whole outfit. Now, the best thing for us to do, I'd say, is to make a fight of it. Well, is it you three against them or us four? Well, for now, I guess it's us four. Yeah, we'll settle your case later. If you're alive. <laughs> He's got something there, Dobbsy. That's right. If we're alive. The bandits turn out to be Gold Hat and his boys. Same crowd that held up the train on our way to Perla. They spotted us all right. Started pouring onto us, too. Then all at once, they turned and took off. Didn't make sense. Then we saw why. Far down the mountain, hot on their trail, was maybe 50 soldiers. Federals. We just stood there watching them shoot it out. Half a mile below us. Oh, look at them Federals. Sick them tied. Chew them up and swallow them. Better stay covered, Dobbs. If them soldiers start spreading out, we may have company after all. Yeah, yeah, get down, Curtin. Hey, come here, you guys. It's like the bandits settled our problem. Cody's dead. What do you mean he's dead? Take a look. Bullet. Right through his neck. I wonder who he was. Maybe we better go through his pockets, huh? Maybe he's got folks somewhere. Now, here's his wallet, Pop. James Cody, uh, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, in a picture. Girl and little kid. Guess she's his wife, huh? Mm, not bad. Well, I guess we better dig a hole for him. Funny how it's all worked out. We didn't have to shoot him after all. Gentlemen... Was you to ask me, I'd say it's time we considered leaving this mountain. How much gold do you figure we got? Oh, upwards of 35000 apiece, and I'll tell you we ought to be plenty thankful. All right, let's call it quits then. Sooner the better. You take another week to put the mountain back into shape. Do what to the mountain? We wounded this mountain. It's our duty to close the wounds. It's the least we can do for all the wealth she's given us. If you guys don't want to help me, then I'll do it myself. <laughs> You know, you talk about a mountain like it was a real woman. <laughs> You're a lot better to me than any woman I ever knew. Keep your shirt on, old-timer. Sure, I'll help you. Six days later, we loaded the gold on the burrs and little canvas bags and started down. Late that afternoon, pushing through the brush, we walked straight into a bunch of engines. They were peaceful and friendly. They wanted help. What do you mean, help? What kind of help? They've been heading for Durango. Seems some little boy in their village fell into the river. They fished him out, but he won't come to. He ain't dead, they say. He just won't come to. Well, that's tough. 
Well, they want me to go back to their village with them. Ain't very fair. Maybe I can do something. Why? Well, were I to refuse them, they'd make me go. I'll be back soon, before morning, probably. And if you're not? Well, I'm leaving my burrs with you. Look after my goods till I get back. <laughs> That's okay, Bob. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for you here. Look, it's no use argifying. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I gotta go back again to the village. But you just said you fixed the kid. Fixing the kid was simple. Artificial respiration and a few boy scout tricks. But you see, I got a visit with them now. Their gods will be angry if they don't show their gratitude to me. Tell them to forget it. They don't owe us a thing. I tried that. Just made a man. I'll handle this. Hey, Savvy, Humphrey, no food to quit on. No, no, Wait a minute, wait a minute. You touch a gun, we'll be scalped in a half an hour. El Senor. El Senor, no importa. El Doctor say importa. What's he saying now? Oh, he says it don't make any difference about you guys, but I got to go back with him. Oh, it's like that, huh? They just want you. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Well, go on, then. We'll meet in Durango. Well, uh, 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 what about my goods? Just take them with you. If they found out, they might forget he was their honored guest and bump him off, huh, Pops? What'll I do, dump it here on the ground? No, we'll take him with us if you want us to. Well, uh, uh, Any uh, better ideas, Pop? Mm, reckon that's about the only solution. <laughs> I bet you you'll remember this the next time you try to do a good deed. Don't worry, Pop. Good luck to you. Hey, yeah, and look out for those Indian dames. One of them squaws might marry you. <laughs> Maybe you might do that. Pick me out a good-looking squaw and marry you. You know, easy to dress, feed, and entertain. Well, so long, partners. See you in Durango. And so I left him and went back with the engines. No choice. I had to go. And behind me, in keeping the curtain and dubs, was my share of the treasure. $35,000. I'm stopping here for the night. You hear me, Curtin? I'm stopping here. But early yet, we could make four or five miles more before dark. Go on, then. But take his burrows with you. They ain't my responsibility. See, and twin. They give us nothing but trouble for two days, trying off trails, smashing their packs against the rocks. He knew what he was doing when he turned them over to us. So, uh, you're staying here for the night, huh? You heard me. Well, if you can't go any further... I... Who says I can't? Don't make me laugh. I can go four times as far as a mug like you, but I don't want to. I could if I want to, but I don't want to. See, mug? What's the use of hollering, Dobbsy? Okay, you will camp here. <laughs> How far do you suppose the railroad is from here? Uh, it's hard to say. We'll reach the high pass in two days more and get fresh water. After that, I don't know. <laughs> hey, what's the joke, Dobby? I was just thinking what a bonehead play that old jackass made when he put all his goods in our keeping. What? He figured he'd let us do his sweating for him, did he? Well, we'll show him. Show him what? Can't you see it's all ours now? We don't go back to Durango at all. Steal his goods? Yeah, we take his goods and go north, leave the old jackass flat. Oh, now, look, you don't you don't really mean that. Fred C. Dobbs don't say nothing he don't mean. As long as I can do anything about it, you won't take a single grain of that old man's goods. Oh, you want to take it all for yourself huh? and cut me out? You are out of your head. I'm on the level with the old oh, man. Oh, sure, with you. sure. For a long time, I've had my suspicions about you, and now I know I've been right. What suspicions? You're going to bump me off, bury me out here in the bush like a dog. You are crazy, Dobbs. And you not only have the old man's goods, but mine in a bargain. Yeah. You'll have yourself a big laugh, won't you? Thinking how dumb the old man and I were. Put your hands up, Curtin. Dobbs. Was I right or was I right? Go on. Stand up. Get on your feet and take it like a man. Trying to put one over on Fred. Pete. Oh. Pull a gun on me, huh? Pull a gun on me only now. I get the gun. Now you listen to me. Go on. Go on, pull a trigger. Dobbsy, look, you're all wrong. I... I never intended to rob you. If you really mean that, then give me back my gun. Look! 
Look, wouldn't it be better the way things are to split up? I mean, right now, tonight. Oh, that would suit you fine, wouldn't it? So you could fall on me from behind, shoot me in the back. All right, then, I'll go first. And wait for me on the trail, huh? Ambush me. If I meant to kill you, why wouldn't I do it right here? Because you're yellow. You haven't got nerve to pull the trigger when I'm looking you straight in the eye. You really believe that, don't you? Jokes. Full of jokes. All right, we won't separate. We'll just go on together. And every day, you'll take the trail right ahead of me, and every night I'm going to tie you up. Oh, I'll tell you what, Curtin. I'll make you a little bet. Three times 35 is 105. I'll bet you $105,000 you go to sleep before I do. How long can you go without sleeping, Curtin? Two days? Three? Four? Whatever it is, I can go longer, see? And the day you fall down on the trail, that's the day Fred C. Dobbs wins his bet $105,000. <laughs> Just like I said, Curtin. Couldn't take it, could you? Fell asleep, didn't you? Who wins the bet? Who wins the bet? The old man will catch up with you. you... I got an answer for that one, too. I'll tell him you tied me to a tree. That you stole all the goods. Yours, mine, and his. So he'll be looking for you, Curtin, not for me. A fat chance he's got a fine in you. So long, partner. In a moment, Act Three of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Say, ladies, wouldn't you like to see your white clothes come out whiter and whiter every time you wash them? Of course you would. And that's exactly what happens every time you use that remarkable new detergent... Rinso Blue. In fact, Lever Brothers unconditionally guarantees it. You see, new Rinso Blue washes white clothes whiter and colors brighter because it blues as it washes, right in your washing machine. Now, obviously, if your present detergent doesn't blue as it washes, it's only doing half the job. So it's a good idea to switch to remarkable new Rinso Blue right away. You'll be mighty enthusiastic about the grand job new Rinso Blue does on your dishes and glasses, too. It gets them sparkling clean without wiping. What's more, it's so mild, so gentle on your hands. So, ladies, be sure to put new Rinso Blue detergent on your shopping list for tomorrow. Remember, new Rinso Blue washes whiter because it blues as it washes. We pause now for station identification. This is WMAQ AM at FM, NBC in Chicago, a service of RCA. 38 degrees, 13 minutes before 9 o'clock. The curtain rises on Act 3 of The Treasure of Sierra Madre, starring Edmund O'Brien as Dobbs and Walter Brennan as Howard. Yeah, I'd left Dobbs and Curtin on the trail with all my goods and gone to the village of the Indians. They couldn't do enough for me. Food and drink and pretty little girls to brush the flies off of me. Yes, sir, old man Howard was a regular mo girl, a real potentate. And then some of their hunters came in from the brush. They were carrying a man. It was Curtin. With two bullet holes in him. Dobbs did it, Howard. Dobbs did it. Made off with that goods, huh? How could he be such a bad shot? He left me there. Thought I was dead. Take it easy, son. You're talking too much. Don't you worry about me. I'll pull out of this if only to get that guy. Well, I reckon we can't blame Dobbs too much. What do you mean? Dobbs ain't a real killer as killers go. The big mistake was leaving you two fellas alone out there in the wilderness. It was a mighty big temptation, partner. Believe me. Uh, Dobbs shot me down in cold blood. He shot me a second time just to make sure. Yeah, man goes crazy with that much wealth in his reach. Maybe if I'd have been young, been out there with either one of you, well, I might have been tempted too. Well, Curtin, nothing to do but sit out after him. Yeah. 
Well, a couple of days now, I'll be okay. Yeah, but not for chasing down a mountainside. Well, uh, the Indians there, they could loan us horses. <laughs> That's why I figure I'll catch Dobbs. He'll go as fast as and as far as a man can, but he's alone. With all them burrows and on foot. I'm going with you. Give me ten days, uh, two weeks, I'll come back for you. I'm going with you. Now look at you, you're weak as a newborn I'm kitten. I'm still going. Uh, yeah, yeah, I reckon you're going. Some of the engines came with us, and as we rode north, I tried to figure out what I'd do as I in Dobbs' boots. I knew what I'd do. I'd try to make time. I'd sacrifice anything for time, sleep, rations, even water. El tercero con la marca de la letra A. Hard. What? What they find? Another dead bird. Dobbs is really pushing him. That's the third bird he's killed off. I don't like this wind. That's blowing like this. Cover up his trail. Yeah, it might blow like this for days. We're not going to stop, are we? Dobbs won't stop. Yeah, we'll keep going. He'll be running out of water soon. We were going to fill up at the high pass. Yeah, only he went north. My friends here say the water's mighty scarce in the north. They say something else, too, Curtin. Yeah? Gold Hat and a couple of his pals escaped the Federals. They're on foot. They passed here just about a day before Dobbs. There is a middle see, as the mud hole. One man and six burros trying to squeeze water out of the mud hole. Ay, six burros. Shoes, shoes, where shoes, see, shoes. I think the three of us have a little fun, huh? <laughs> Jewelry, too, <laughs> maybe, huh? Come on, we say hello to our friend. Water. Water. I made it. Yeah, I made it. Well, the town can't be far off now. The road over there. Just one more day. And... Hola, amigo. What do you want? For well, three poor men in rugs, senor. Cigarettes? You have cigarettes, maybe? No. No, I haven't. I, I got a little tobacco. That'll do. Oh, he's got a little tobacco. Oh, no yeah. paper to roll it in? Paper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Going into Perla, amigo? Yeah, that's right. I got to sell my burrows. I got to get the money. Matches for cigarette. Yeah. The honey shakes, amigo. You sick, maybe? Sick? No, no, I ran out of water. I... I'm all right now. I could use a good burrow driver, maybe maybe two or three. Burrow <laughs> drivers, <laughs> oh, well, Hey, when we get to town, I'm a hunter. You see all those hides? Hey, did I know you from some place? Maybe I know you, huh? No, no, I, I don't think so. You're all alone there. Poor, lonely man. Oh, no, no, I'm not alone. I I got a couple of friends coming along. They, they ought to be here any minute. Let me look at your face. <laughs> June, June, I know I see you before. Up in the mountains, the guy in the rocks before the Federalist chase. You're up. crazy. I never seen you till now. You don't remember me? Me with the yellow sombrero, the gold hat? I think you tell a lie. No, no, I'm not lying. Listen. Oh, you got a load of hides on the burros, huh? Yeah, like I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a hunter. Ought to bring a lot of money, huh? All these hides. Get away from them. Get away from them hides. You can sell these burros too. Hey, watch these. These little cloth bags filled with something. Give me the knife. I think I look in the little bag. You touch those bags, I'll kill you. Okay, it's some kind of a joke. Nothing in this bag. Holy sand, dirt. All the little bags got only sand. Get out of here. Clear out a before pistol, I... Huh? You can't run in a thick cloud with that. You can only shoot one of us before the other two jump on you. 
That one won't mind too much because he says that Alice are after him anyway. Stand back there. Stand out! <laughs> with a rock. I hit him with a rock. His shoes. I get his shoes. Finish him you know. off. Come on, finish him. <laughs> Feeling, Curtin? I'm all right. It'll be the town over the hill there, Perler. We're almost there. Yeah, but will Dobbs be there? Yes, sir. That's the question, all right. I'm... Shooting? Yeah. Kind of like a volley. Town seemed to come from town. Girando, senor. She's off lost federales. Take one drum banditos. Si, federales. Execution, probably. We'll know pretty soon now. Looks like we guessed it right, Curtin. Execution. Three bandits. Storekeeper here says one of them was gold hats. <laughs> we finally got him. Yes, no es todo, señor. He says that's not all, either. Look, we better keep after Dobbs now. You think of malas noticias, señor. Su compañero. Bueno. Su compañero fue muerto a sangre fría por los tres bandidos. He's dead, Curtin. Dobbs is dead. Dead? <laughs> yeah, those bandits. But, but our goods, what's he say about our goods? Donde están nuestras cosas? Aquí, señor. Yo tengo todo aquí, incluyendo los burritos. Están detrás de la tienda. <laughs> he says he's got everything in the back of the store. <laughs> Howard, the gold's gone. Everything else is here but the gold. Keep your shirt on, senor. ¿Qué pasa, senor? ¿Sabe algo sobre unos cas castellitos uh, muy pesados? Uh, no, senor. No. De eso no sé nada. Well, huh? Uh, he says everything the bandits had right here. Senor, you asked my father about some little canvas bags? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Where are they? I heard the bandidos talking in the jail, senor. They said the senor whom they killed had canvas bags with sand in them. Many, many bags on the burros. Where are they? Where'd they kill the Americans? At the water hole by the ruined wall outside the town. Can you take us there? The season are right away. There's another one, Howard. It's empty. These bags are all empty. They're cut open and empty. Hey, keep looking! Yeah, keep looking, empty, man! All right, they're empty. In another couple of hours in this wind, we wouldn't even find a bag. Whipped away and buried under the dust of the earth. But what happened here? Bandits. Why, ah. them miserable, stupid, ignorant bandits. Stole Dobbs' shoes, took the shirt off on his back, and threw away $105,000 worth of gold. Oh, it, it must be here on the ground somewhere? In this wind? <laughs> it's a big joke, Curtin, old boy. Laugh! It's a great joke played on us by the Lord of fate and nature of... Whatever you prefer. But whoever or whatever played it certainly had a sense of humor. <laughs> the gold is gone, Curtin. Gone back where we found it. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone all right. It's all gone. Dobbs is dead and the gold is gone. <laughs> this is worth ten months of suffering and labor. This is joking. <laughs> The Indians with you, they're laughing too. <laughs> oh, they, don't, they don't know what they're laughing at. Our <laughs> own private joke, good no boy. <laughs> Here, I wonder. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I'm fixed. Yeah. I'll go back to the engines. Yeah. Be a medicine man. <laughs> Three meals a day, a roof over my head, and a drink every now and then to warm me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be worshipped and fed and treated like a high priest for, for telling people things they want to hear. Good medicine men are born, not made. Yeah. Come and see me sometime, my boy. <laughs> yeah, I'll be fixed for the rest of my natural life. How about yourself? What do you aim to be doing? Oh, I haven't got any idea. Oh, you're young yet. You, you got plenty of time to make three, four fortunes for yourself. You know, I'm really no worse off than I was back in Tampico. 
about a couple hundred bucks when you come right down to it. Not very much compared to what Dobsey lost. Any special place you've been on going? No, all places are the same to me. Oh, say, look, I'll tell you what. You can keep my share of what the burrs and the hides will bring if you use the money to buy a ticket to Dallas. See Cody's widow. You know it's better than writing. Just tell her what happened. Okay, Pop, I'll go to Dallas. Hey, you, son, come here. Yes, he can not. Hey, tell your father to give this man all the hides and the burrs. I'm going off with the engines. Si, senor. Well, I guess I'll round up my heathen brethren and we'll be on our way. <laughs> Goodbye, Curtin. Goodbye, Howard. Good luck. Same to you. <laughs> sponsor, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening.